I'm working on an exhibition uh, at the K21 called Mine, um, which is a project that contrasts different types of extraction. So it looks at how the mining industry and uh, pulling resources out of the ground is kind of connected to other forms of extractive industry like data. And um, it sort of contrasts the digital world with the physical world and shows how interconnected that all is. And in the exhibition, there's a number of sculptures, drawings, augmented reality experiences, and a whole paradigm on Minecraft as well. So um, as viewers come in, they will be able to look through different ways that extraction can be thought about in the room, on the internet, and in industry. It's an expensive start, huh? Yeah. It's a very high volume game. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's 50,000 to me. The game we're playing here is uh, Extractor, of course, which is a central part of the show, Mine. Yeah, Boaz, you were helping me make this uh, exhibition, but also this game. I think one of the inspirations for me was this text, uh, Anatomy of an AI System, written by Kate Crawford and Vladen Jola, which also um, posed that question. It said, like, all of these ways of understanding extraction are so interconnected that it's hard to think of it as one process, right? Like, how do you connect the minerals from the ground with the uh, extraction practices that uh, structure labor, you know, and, uh, and that then structure data. And while they are all deeply interconnected, it can seem so ephemeral when you have an object like this and you're working through uh, something which seems very discreet. So this game and I think the whole exhibition was about trying to draw those connections in and kind of put them all in one place so you can kind of look at them without it being too overwhelming, right? This plays a huge role in our everyday life, from like our laptops to the cloud that we use on an everyday basis to uh, our phones. Even the language we use to describe these devices is kind of um, contrived in a way as to obscure their interconnectedness. No, the cloud, right. this kind of ubiquitous uh, description of something which is supposed to be ephemeral, which is in fact like a huge carbon guzzling industry, you know, which right. is kind of um, saturated in extraction. And I think if we look at the object in front of us, Extractor, the board game, um, which was based here on, on Squatter, the board game, which is this Australian game which was very popular in the mid uh, 20th century and still sells. It's like the most popular board game in Australia. Apparently, yeah, exactly. And it's based on sheep farming. So another extractive colonial enterprise. Instead of farming sheep, you collect data. And instead of uh, selling that sheep wool, you monetize on that data. And you build up uh, kind of uh, in the cloud um, all your data resources. While this game is about getting a, a cloud business and uh, kind of platform capitalism and, and using data, Actually, the imagery of it and the box um, and the show itself is about actual physical mining, so um, pulling resources and rocks out of the ground. Um, Which also relates to the Australian context. Yeah. But both also to the context here in Dusseldorf. In Dusseldorf. Yeah, the exhibition was originally kind of produced and conceived for Tasmania, and mine has a special relevance to that location because with the onset of colonialism, the mining industry has been core to Australia's industry and wealth extraction. Mm. But so has Dusseldorf. You know, the mining industry goes back a long way in the Ruhr district. And I think part of that connection that I saw between those two locations and also for the exhibition was to say that um, this is a whole uh, paradigm which uh, is, has been kind of um, taken from one place and kind of exported um, by force all over mm. the world. Talking about data mining, you can get caught up very easily with kind of the novelty or the seeming novelty of this whole discourse. Yes. But I think what was also part of the kind of agenda in this composite metaphors is to kind of point at the long durée, the kind of long history, the deep history um, of these processes. I mean, it grafts on to the question of automation in a way, kind of, okay, these technologies which were once very labor intensive, maybe 
the most labor-intensive kind of industry, mining, which was always, um, because of how labor-intensive it was, it was also a cause for a lot of political agitation and mobilization and strikes. And now it's becoming kind of fully automated and is also integrated into this logic of kind of data extractions. Yeah, one little uh, hidden um, kind of uh, carrot on the cover is a ruined cage uh, here. Mm -hmm. And I think the issues that you're talking about play to the first piece that viewers encounter in the exhibition. And that is this design for an Amazon worker cage pulled out of a patent. Um, so it's a very interesting poetic object where Amazon patented in 2016 this machine cage that would put a human onto the sorting robots that they have in their warehouses, right? So uh, usually this is a peopleless space which is organized purely algorithmically by little robots moving around shelves. And with this cage, you could put a human into it and kind of stick it into the robot's dance. Mm. And I found that very evocative and this whole idea of uh, what could a cage be in a mine-like environment um, really compelled, I think, both of us. So the first piece is this cage made real, pulled out of the patent and visualized in, uh, in space. And then also it has this other bird, the bird most likely to have become extinct in the whole of Australia, the King Island brown thornbill. And then we made this kind of virtual King Island brown thornbill which flew uh, in around inside the cage when you look through your device, right? So the minerals come out of the ground, make this device and then enable us to look at this bird which is becoming extinct, flying around inside a labour cage for humans. Um, and I think that is this kind of very poetic moment in the yeah. show. It's also a composite of several metaphors because that refers to this notion of the canary in the coal mine, no? right. which some people have described this bird as the canary in the coal mine of the coming extinction. The Amazon worker's cage, I think, is one space of simplicity and kind of clarity. And you're sort of proposed with this uh, object, uh, which is a very simple interaction, and there's a lot tied up in that. Yeah. Whereas with the game, um, it's a sort of multi-dimensional kind of um, multi-layered, uh, you know, reference Very heavy, dense. yeah, yeah um, kind of dense uh, thing to unpack. And obviously, yeah, we had this fantastic review <laughs> on uh, BoardGameGeek.com, which said it was kind of the worst game ever played, <laughs> which is kind of great too, because it is kind of a horrible game in a way. Yeah. Um, uh, but I also think it's, it speaks to some of the complexity that we were trying to kind of build into it. So I think this, uh, this is a sculpture, a gamified sculpture in a way, and I think it's as much to kind of uh, look at, explore, and kind of read like a book mm. as it is to kind of play. I came to you, I think, with a vision for um, an image actually that started our interaction, right? Which became the cover of this game. So we started with the making of this image, right? So I think I came to you and said, um, I wanted uh, something which uh, riffed on another game, the game Squatter. And I said, I wanted it to have a dialogue with that image, but I wanted it to be kind of a mining site. And I wanted it to have uh, a guy instead of on a horse, I wanted him with an iPad and a sort of a dystopian kind of post-mine world. I mean, what really helped me was we already had kind of the image that you wanted, but for me also it was kind of difficult to, you know, make something different out of it and make it still look good. Because, like, as a visual artist, I usually work with composition and stuff. Uh, so this one was like a challenge for me and like, you know, you have to see like, okay, that's kind of the same image, but uh, how can I make it look interesting and fitting? you also made these images which then became sculptures, right? Mm -hmm. So these were kind of giant drawings of um, machines which mine uh, stuff out of the ground, sort kind of automated machinery which kind of is in uh, contemporary mining equipment. And um, that was an interesting process for you as well, I think, is, right? Because it was like, again, not working in a screen scale, you're working in a kind of a, a print scale. Okay, yeah, so the biggest challenge, like as I said, was the scale with this one. Uh, for sure, because you know I, I made sketches, and then you guys said like, okay, yeah, we want the sketch, and then it came back, and I think like we started having like this conversation about, okay, but this has to be bigger now, and I, and I was like, okay, well, how big? And then I kind of you know did the math and found out, okay, shit, this I'm not sure like if my PC is like going to handle this. I mean, I couldn't really plan for like how this thing would actually look like like right. in real life. 
Yeah, because that's, I think, one of the things that became really compelling for me in these drawings and quite unusual. Like, it's it, with this, with the kind of, yeah, kind of parts that you recognize with a lot of kind of, uh, you know, different ways of layering onto it. But then also, um, yeah, these more kind of gestural marks. And you get this kind of space, which is really halfway between a collage and a, and, and a photograph, you know? For me, it was just super interesting to, to you know, see, like, how this looks like in the end i was just like blown away by like how how big everything was and you know seeing it actually in real life and uh, like having people react to it also having people like from a different background i guess i think what's really important is that the aesthetic that you're using is very contemporary and it's located in the industry that you work in right like it yes. it speaks of the game world yeah, you know for sure and for me uh what was exciting for working with you was that you could bring that aesthetic into an environment where people are looking at images differently. You know, they're kind of, they, they, they think about the history of art, they think about the history of collage in a, in a completely different way than I think a lot of people in the game world do. And I think that's one of the exciting things to work with other people like you as an artist, because you get to kind of look at this aesthetic from like a different paradigm. Yeah, you know? yeah. So basically, I just want you to tell me a little bit about um, what you do as a courtroom sketch artist and kind of what role do you play uh, in the court cases that you work on? It's very interesting for the public to be able to see what these accused look like because they'll go off to jail and they'll never be seen again. People want to see that and they want to feel that that person um, is getting what they deserve, I suppose. So mm. that's what I'm capturing in the courtroom. Obviously, what I asked you to do was slightly unusual and the fact that um, uh, we were making images of court cases that actually haven't happened and are pretty unlikely to happen. Yeah, I guess the difference is um, with your pictures, um, they were of screen grabs or, or all sorts of pictures that were sourced from all over the place. Um, I had to then sort of imagine them into scenes that I was very used to sketching. That part was easy because I, I knew what the courtroom looked like. I knew how I could fit them all in and where they would actually sit if they were there. I wanted it to look as authentic as possible, so I had to put them in suits, um, take their smiles off their faces, and sometimes I had to turn their faces, or, or some of them, you know, just imagine their faces. But mm -hmm. It was challenging. But it, but it was good. I kind of wanted the sketches to do the same thing that they usually do for viewers in a way, like put, put you in a room, allow you to imagine what might go on in a situation that you're not party to, right? That you're not present yeah. for. And so I think that's a really interesting connection between, let's say like a real court sketch that you usually do and this commission is that they're both about imagining situations that are kind of um, not for everybody's eyes. So maybe we can just talk a little bit about the process of us, what we're working on together. Uh, for the K21, my idea was to kind of like make a, a version of this exhibition experience that was also existing in Minecraft um, at the same time. And to stick it, as I say, below this um, very important, very iconic coal mine in the rural district. Yeah, this is the um, historical site, the Zollverein. Currently I'm building the buildings here in Minecraft wow. that we need in order to make this place um, yeah, be recognizable as the Zollverein. We have some iconic features of the, of the building here, like these red, I guess, metal beams, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the points of reference for us is basically, yeah, Google Earth <laughs> and some 3D images we saw. Yeah, here down at the mine shaft, we also have the K21, just like in the real world. Just yeah. like in the real world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the idea here is to go deeper into the mines until you reach the exhibition rooms. Amazing. Yeah, but wow. this is it, the K21. I really love uh, the way that the space is looking. Amazing. Um, can you talk about maybe some of the challenges of like working um, in putting this into this other medium um, as like, uh, or, oh wow, that's so amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, challenges would probably be um, the notion of scale. 
uh, in Minecraft, we don't have much choice when it comes to to the aspect ratio. So we have to kind of translate it into the Minecraft world so it looks accurate and distinguishable in the Minecraft world. I think it's important to find a good balance, like a sweet spot between um, making it distinguishable as a work, but also not making it fall out of the fantasy in Minecraft. So it right. still looks Minecrafty, but you can distinguish it as a work. Incredible. Yeah, so. Hey, thanks so much, Jan. That's really absolutely amazing. Um, and also like great to kind of be, actually see it from my side too. That's like super cool.